Today we'll spend our time of communion in Colossians 2, so you can go ahead and turn there. Um, And if you don't have a Bible, there are men in the front that would love to put one in your hands. So just raise your hand and uh, they'll bring one to you. And if you don't own a Bible, uh, this is our gift to you to keep. During our time of communion, we take a piece of cracker and a cup of juice, and we use those to symbolize the body and the blood of Christ. We do this in submission to Christ's command to remember him and his death on the cross. So this morning, while we're doing that, I want to look at a passage that reminds us of why he went to the cross and the significance of what he did there. Read with me from Colossians 2, verses 13 and 14. When you were dead in your transgressions, And the uncircumcision of your flesh, he made you alive together with him, having forgiven us all our transgressions, having canceled out the certificate of debt consisting of decrees against us, which was hostile to us, and he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross. Verse 13 describes something significant about our state prior to conversion. We were dead in our transgressions and the uncircumcision of our flesh. Every person on this planet has been in this state. Paul used the terms dead and uncircumcised to describe this condition. Dead in our transgressions highlights that there is no hope for us to raise ourselves from the dead. We are sinful and are helpless in this state. Death is a collective expression of the entire judicial consequences of sin. An uncircumcision of the flesh is general sinful impurity by nature. We had no way out. Then verse 13 turns a corner and says, you are alive in Christ. And he did that through forgiveness. So who is the you in this passage? That's important for us to know. The direct context of this passage was primarily Gentiles who were born with no hope, but they had put their faith and trust in Jesus as their Savior. So the you today is those of you in this room that have put your faith and trust in Jesus to save you. That's what Paul means when he describes that you are alive in Christ. You have submitted your life to him and trust that his sacrifice on the cross was sufficient in saving you from your sins. Paul writes, He made us together with him, having forgiven us all our transgressions. Having made a statement about God's forgiveness at the end of verse 13, Paul continued to speak of that same forgiveness in verse 14. But he used imagery here. Beautiful imagery, actually. He made you alive together with him, having forgiven us all our transgressions, having canceled out the certificate of debt consisting of decrees against us, which was hostile to us, and he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross. Here's the picture Paul was painting to illustrate forgiveness. God had in his possession a legal document, a certificate of debt. On that certificate were recorded decrees against us. The word decrees had to do with God's laws. God had, as it were, a piece of paper that listed every one of his laws which we had ever broken. That's a horrifying thought. If he had just a piece of paper with just one of his laws that we had broken, we would have needed Christ to go to the cross. And yet we have all sinned every single day of our lives, and every single one of those sins is on a piece of paper. On that piece of paper, it recorded an unpayable debt, a debt that we owed to God. And on the cross, that debt was canceled. The Greek word Paul used here can be translated erased. The certificate recording our legal obligation to God was rubbed out. It became unreadable. God took Christ's blood and wrote across it, paid in full. The notice of our debt was blotted out. Or as Paul succinctly stated at the end of verse 14, it was taken out of the way. God nailed that paper to the cross and left it there. So in summary, God's forgiveness is the cancellation of an unpayable debt that the sinner owes to God. It is a blotting out or a complete removal of the guilt of sin. 
Christian, we're here to worship our Savior for what Christ did at the cross, and more importantly, what that act tells us about our God. God is the one who not only went to the cross, but sent his own son there. And he did that for every single one of us that puts our faith in him this morning. That deserves our full attention. There are some of you in the room that do not believe this and have not put your faith in God. I want to talk to you for a second. There is nothing you can do to out God's grace and his payment for your sin. It does not matter how long that list is that was nailed to the cross. Christ's death was sufficient for all sins. His death was more significant than anything you can imagine. You need to put your faith and trust in him and trust that his sinless, perfect life paid the debt that you could not pay on your own. But during this time of communion, it is set aside for those of us that have submitted our lives to Christ. And so please let the cup and the bread pass by. But spend this time in prayer asking God to show you what, how significant this is, the depth of your sin, your need for a Savior. And any one of us that are here would love to talk to you. We'll have some people over here after the service. They'd love to talk to you about how you can commit your life to him. We're going to take communion on our own today. Men, come forward, and I'll close our time in prayer. Thank you.